So much talk this week about the Miami quarterback situation, how this is being handled heading into the bowl game and how it's going to be handled in the transfer portal. Let's talk to a former Miami Hurricanes QB1. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen. We are part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Told you we're bringing friends today. (laughs) We've got, along with my guy Bruce Warner, the truth teller, we've got former Miami Hurricanes QB1, Ja'Cory Harris is with us. Bruce, it's great to see your face, but it's even better to see Ja'Cory's. Mr. Harris, how are you? Well, he's better looking than me, so of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alex and Bruce, man. Appreciate you know being on the show with you guys, man. I know it's going to be a, a good one. It's a lot it to talk about. Yeah, right. and, and let people know, by the way, before we get into your thoughts on what's happening at Miami now and, and some of the reflections on your career, let people know what you're up to these days. We followed you at Miami. I even mm-hmm. followed you in the CFL. Well, what is Ja'Cory Harris up to these days? Oh, uh, you know, up, the only thing that I'm up to these days is saving lives, man. You know, uh, I'm a, currently a firefighter with Miami-Dade County. Um, you know, it's a it's a wonderful job. It's a rewarding job, and I'm I'm happy that I was able to, uh, you know, find something, um, you know, that's rewarding after playing football for so many years. Uh, I really appreciate, it and I'm humbled to be a part of this uh, department, and that's what I do now. I, I save lives. Awesome. That's awesome. I mean, he's just an awesome young man. You know, I, I knew him when he was at the school. We became friends while he was there. And um, and now just to see him do this and he's he, 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 young people in Miami, Dade or Broward or South Florida need to listen to this kid. He's got a positive attitude. He's very uplifting. And I'm really happy he's joining us on the show today. Well, no, I appreciate oh. you guys, man. Really appreciate that, Bruce. You know, I, 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 I love and I, I love appreciate you. you. Oh, we we both appreciate you saving lives out there, man. I, I can't thank you enough for that. Um, so you know something I I'd love to pick your brain on. You know when put uh, we'll ask Jakari about the situation for Jakari. Jakari Brown. <laughs> it's been confirmed he is going to start Miami's yet to be determined bowl game uh, at some point in the month of December. Um, what do you think is going through his mind, Jacory? Because obviously, it's it's been uh, he hasn't played a snap this year, has been red shirting, but hasn't been used. Yes. And, and now he's going to get a huge opportunity coming up. How, how do you think he should approach that? And how should Miami approach that from an offensive standpoint, knowing you've got a guy who can run in a mm-hmm. way Tyler Van Dyke and Emery Williams can't? Man, you know, I was. I, I don't know about you guys, but I was scared uh, with Emory Williams being hurt and uh, TVD deciding to, you know, going to the transfer portal. Um, I didn't know what was going to transpire with Ja'Curry Brown because I thought he was in, on the way, you know, to transferring as well. Um, but I wish the young man nothing but the best. I, I, I feel like this is going to be his opportunity to showcase his skills and showcase the talents that uh, many of us have seen over the years. Um uh, and I'm pretty sure he's going to go out there and uh, and it's going to be a game where he's going to be like he got a chip on his shoulder. He has something to prove because, you know, it's been instances throughout the season where I'm pretty sure he felt like he should have been on the field. He shouldn't have at least got an opportunity. Um, but, hey, now you have your opportunity. You just got to go show show what you can do. As a follow up to that. Yeah, Corey. Last year we saw him play. We mm-hmm. saw what a big upside he had. But he had deficiencies in the passing game. He had deficiencies with his footwork and stay in the pocket, things like that. So how difficult it is for him mm-hmm. with the coaching staff to be able to turn that around and to show improvement, even though he hasn't played this year? Is it like a two or three year project with a kid like that? Or do you think he's got the skills and he may be able to show it uh, uh, on in the bowl game? The one thing that's special about him is um he's an athlete so with athletes it's not like you got a guy that just can't make any plays that can't uh you know run they can't move with the athlete when things break down and when things don't go his way he can't make plays that's so that's a that's a that's a special ability to have and you don't find it in a lot of people so um 
I think he's going to be fine. I think, uh, you know, last year he had ups and downs. He had highlight moments. He had some low moments uh, when he got his opportunity to play. But um, I think he's going to be – they're going to put him in the best position. I hope – I'm going to be honest. This is me, my truthful opinion. I hope they do not have the same play calling when they have Emory Williams in the game because I feel like when Emory Williams was in the game, they should have gave him a lot more opportunity to throw the ball down the field – uh, showcase his talents as well, and I hope that they don't, you know, handicap these kids uh, during the bowl game and allow them to just go out there and play and, and execute at a high level. Right, and I, and then one step further, this kid has a tremendous upside. Yes, yes. major upside. He could be a, an All American if he could work on some of these deficiencies. So I hope he stays. Yes. I hope he shows out. I hope he stays and work with him. Because he's got a much bigger upside. And I like Emory Williams. My goodness, this kid could be All-American with what the skill set he has. Oh, I think we just have to allow the kids to show that. Um, you know, the little hitches and slants and bubble screens, that can only take you so 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 far, man. We got, to me, I think we have the best offensive line in the country. Um, and it does suck to not see, from what from what I, I saw, none of them made first team All-American, All-ACC. I was ranting about that this morning, Ja'Cory, that uh, yeah. how, how do you have one of the best O-lines in the country and the ACC doesn't put anybody on the – it's ridiculous. Yeah, You're right. it's, it's a lot of things I don't understand about that. The James Williams, uh, <laughs> the Jacoby, uh, him not being first team over Keon Coleman. Yeah. It's a lot of things that, uh, you know, that, that you don't understand, but you control what you can control. Just go out there and make plays. Uh, and, like, you know, Ja'Cory coming up in the bowl game, just – I just wanted to be free. Uh, now he's the guy. I do feel like this is going to be uh, a game in which if he showcases his skills and balls out, I think, this is my honest opinion, I feel like he's going to leave. I yeah. feel like, he's gonna I feel like it's going to be, yes. I feel like it's gonna be, okay, you know what? I showed you guys that I can play, that I can ball. And now, now other people see that, and I want to test. I'm, I'm going to want to test hey, the water. He reminds me of Vince Young. Vince Young had a horrible throwing motion; it was almost mm -hmm. quarters. But he had the athleticism to become as as good as he can be. This kid can be just like that. He can. You know? All you got to do is get the ball to the playmakers. That's it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'd love, I'd love your take, Chikori, on uh, on the Tyler Van Dyke era, because like the the high, the highs were so high. The lows were so low. I, I mm -hmm. think it's probably it's probably the best thing for everybody to move on. Like I, I'm rooting for Tyler. You know, I, I hope he can improve his NFL draft stock again. You know, from a Miami standpoint, they probably want to find more consistency next year. But well, what's your take on how things went for Van Dyke these last couple of years? Uh, it, it there were some highs. Uh, one of my friends was he was getting on me because um uh, I always speak highly highly about uh, Tyler Van Dyke because. I had the opp opportunity to see him at a paradise camp and he blew me away just watching him, uh, you know, make some throws and stand in the pocket. He was a poised young man. He was a, a, a nice kid. Um, and he showed, he showed a lot of that when he had the opportunity to, to play. And then it was just, you know, somewhere, you know, things just took a, a turn and, um, you know, I understand you got different coordinators, um, you know, things change and uh, a lot of things that you, you that's out of your control that uh, that kind of affects you. But uh, I wish him nothing but the best. I, I think he's going to do well wherever he decides to go. And I hope that he does. Um, you know, he is able to show showcase some of the skill sets that made him, you know, one of the top quarterbacks coming into the season. Guys, we're only getting started. We're going to continue the conversation with Ja'Cory Harris. I got to ask him about the game that he had against Florida State back in 2009. I remember it like it was yesterday. I will never forget that. And I also, I want to talk about the importance because this is, you know, born and raised South Florida kid who, you know, represented South Florida, kept his talents home at Miami, what that meant to him. We got so much we still want to get to right here. So, folks, you want to keep it locked to Locked on Canes. And, guys, prize picks, I'm telling you, this will change your life if you enjoy Daily Fantasy Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you just pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections, and you watch the winnings roll in. And with basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball 
from the specials league. If you want to play alongside some of prize picks, favorite players like rapper Meek Mill, comedian Andrew Schultz, you can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. And here's what I love even more about prize picks guys. They offer a reboot policy. Your entries stay in play. Even if one of your players gets injured for football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize picks is the only DFS platform with an injury insurance policy. So guys go to prizepickscom slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. That's prizepickscom slash locked on college and use our code locked on college. All one word. For a date for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks, Prize Picks really is daily fantasy made easy. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. Alex Dono, Bruce Warner, the truth teller. We got former Miami Hurricanes QB one Jacory Harris with us now. Jacory, um, I know for a lot of Miami fans like myself, we will never forget that thriller 2009 that night game at Florida State when you, you beat Bobby Bowden's FSU in in dramatic fashion. Uh, you know, I know from the perspective of a lot of fans, that was like, the, the, this is the, the greatest Ja'Cory Harris memory. Was that your greatest memory at Miami? And, and what do you remember from that game? Uh, to be honest, yes, it, it was. It was it was one of the best uh, moments that I, I do, um, I think about all the time, man. You know, just being in that atmosphere, um, like I always say, man, it, it feels good when everybody hates you and everybody's against you. It, it, it actually feels good to walk in someone's stadium and uh, to silence the crowd. Um, Florida State was an amazing team, uh, had a Hall of Fame coach, and to go out there and uh, do what we did as a team, that was the that was the most amazing part. That that and the drop ball in the end zone. Yes, yes. <laughs> that I had to pay highlight for me. I still can't believe the kid dropped it. It was right in his gut. But yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of, you know, a lot of people at the end of the game were like, I said, when I replayed, uh, when I resaw everything, uh, they were like, jacory has got ice in his veins. He's not even celebrating. I wasn't celebrating because I I was like, wait, I'm waiting for them to review. This was, I, I think this man caught this ball because yeah. Christian Ponder didn't throw the ball like too high. I mean, too low or anything. It hit him right in the chest. Yeah. So when I saw that, I was just standing on the sideline and shocked. Like, I know we did not just lose this game on this. So once it was, uh, you know, uh determined that he dropped the ball that's when i was able to cheer and uh actually enjoy the win <laughs> yeah that was scary because you hey, know hey. You, you think of the ohio state bowl game the championship game where they call pass interference we always get screwed oh it seems <laughs> like we always get screwed but not that time that was great. yeah not that time not that, that, that you was quite right or why i left but that was just as good as another yeah. another florida state moment where they had it and they blew it yeah, you know it's crazy. Um, a lot of people don't know this because it got deleted. Uh, but after the game, which I don't know why I did this, uh, but, but I remember Coach Shannon being mad. And Coach Shannon is my guy, man. I love Coach Shannon. He, uh, I went into the locker room. I grabbed my little nice watch. I grabbed, uh, I had this uh, Louis Vuitton scarf and some uh, nice sunglasses. And I was like, I'm doing my interview like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I went and did an interview like that. Oh, and I remember Shannon walking by, seeing me, and he was like, take it all off. You guys bet not air this, delete wow. it off. <laughs> wow. Delete it all. So yeah, I was, cause in my mind, I was like, man, we finna bring the swag back to Miami. Yeah. I'm coming out here to do this interview just like this. Somebody got a picture of it. Uh, oh, really? but the interview never was uh that little interview was never released. Well, and that and that was Randy. Who was yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, Randy who, didn't who like that. that. He well, yeah, and, 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 and on a number of levels, I understand it, and like, yeah, also in the I like, and like yeah, and and like in, and back in the it gets a little bit different now. Like still, a guy a guy like Randy, even if you know if he was a head coach right now, probably still wouldn't want that out there but it's like it's so different now with like the nil stuff jacory mm -hmm. that you know play, players can show a little more flash these days yeah i know they can man and it's you know i understood um a hundred percent um you know where randy was coming from because at the end of the day he wanted to protect his guys and uh he didn't want us to you know because i know you guys are part of the media but this it happens sometimes where you know guys 
build themselves up so high and then next thing you know you're allowing uh access for people to bring you down and uh right. college college kids sometimes don't don't understand that and um so you need you need role models and adults to you know help coaches to help lead the way and show you hey look try to you know not do too much so early and um until you establish yourself when you establish yourself then hey do what you got to do but establish yourself first uh make a name for yourself and then if you choose that you want to go to that that direction then you go that direction and, and listen, were, you that, that, were you a freshman that year I was a sophomore. sophomore. Right? Yeah, I was a sophomore. That was my started first game sophomore year. Right. And what 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 he's saying it, it means a lot to me. What you just said, Jacory, because like they're they're like obviously sometimes there are just bad actors in the media who will just mm -hmm. you know they'll try they'll try to bring people down to raise their profile or whatever. Yeah. But I can also tell you sometimes that stuff happens by accident. Like there, there yeah. have been times where I I've said something about you know a player and I don't really even realize sometimes how my words can be hurtful and then i either reflect on it afterwards or i hear from somebody who's like hey are you sure you should have said that i'm like you know what you're absolutely right so so when you have that kind of access sometimes media members do it on purpose sometimes it happens by accident. yeah but at the end of the day uh everybody has a job to do and we're all human and um i think that's something that i realized that's why i never had an issue with anything because we're all human and i notice it now because i sit at the screen and i curse quarterbacks out left and right but i threw a million interceptions <laughs> so, so it's like it's like you know i if you when you love the sport when you enjoy doing what you do you're you become passionate about it and you guys do an amazing job when it comes to media you're passionate about it and that's what we need from media personalities to be passionate about it because if you're not then we're not going to get the genuine facts we're not going to get the genuine feelings from you guys or about the team about players your personal opinions you know all that stuff isn't gonna uh, that's what makes great media so that's why i don't i never had an issue with it um and i, I really appreciate you guys so i always have jacory i don't know if you could answer this one but give it your best shot so i'm looking and reflecting on this past season Mm -hmm. I see Miami light up Texas A&M, and in the last game of the season, they lit up Austin College. What happened in all those other games mm -hmm. that they just couldn't get out of their own way? Now, everybody's throwing the blame, for the most part, on Van Dyke. But I look at it as I don't know what happened with the play calling, but it was pretty bad in a lot of the games. Not, not throwing um, Dawson under the bus, but I want your honest opinion. Didn't it look different to you? Uh to be honest, things change um, <laughs> after we did not take a knee it's against Georgia fun, Tech. Huh? <laughs> after we didn't take a knee against Georgia Tech, it seemed like things just took a turn for the worse. And you and you would think, okay, we're going to bounce back after this. But that was a tough loss. It's an ACC opponent. Um, you had the game won. You didn't lose the game. The game was won. Mm -hmm. And I knew from the start, I mean, well, not from the start, but from when we didn't take the knee, I, I was talking to my one of my friends and I'm like, yo, something's bad about to happen. I got a feeling there's something bad about to happen because the football gods are looking at this and saying, oh, you're not going to take a knee on a team that you're winning against and the game is over. You really have no reason to run another play. And, um, and, then, and then it happened. And then it was like, a bunch of sequences just it's like three four plays in a row happened that would never happen ever right. again if we was to replay that whole scenario again right and i said that after before the last play we should have called a timeout to make absolutely certain that our safeties don't come up if they have guys mm -hmm. at the goal line because there was not enough time they had no more yeah. timeouts this was it why and, do you not call timeout which has nothing to do with taking a knee but still it's another bad decision and then you also can't leave the game in the referee's hands because they probably look at it like, wait, hold on. Why are they not kneeing the ball? You know what? We ain't making none of it. Because one, Cheney was down, obviously. But on the yeah. on the on the reviews that they did have that they kept showing on TV, you could not see right. um his elbow being down at the same time. Um, but then what was even more blatant, because then you've seen it in other games, um, the guy took us, he slid two yards before he even got into the end zone. Yep. So that's he, right. He would have been down. They showed a picture 
Yeah. And in college football, I'm pretty sure it's in, in football, period. As soon as you initiate a slide, that's where you're down. Yep. And it happened in, a, I think, like a week or two later where a team was running for a first down on, like, fourth and six. The kid, he slid, like, uh, probably a foot before the uh, first down, but he's, but when he slid, he slid, like, five yards. So he clearly had the first down, but where he initiated the slide, it was behind it, and they spotted it back. So it's like, man, they didn't do this for Miami. Right. But we can't expect that because it was almost like we slapped them in the face by not kneeling the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I took it the same way. Uh, by the way, we'll continue the conversation with Ja'Cory Harris. Uh, I want to get to – oh, I ho- hope he's still there. Uh, I want to get uh, I want to get his uh, takes on the direction of the program and what it meant for him out of Miami Northwestern to stick around and represent the U. So you guys want to keep it locked right here. We are not done yet here on this episode of Locked on Canes. Folks, if you're a small business owner – you know how important it is to hire the right people for that small business. You want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes the best place to hire. Guys, hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats that might not have time uh, or resources to hire. Thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. They even just launched a feature that helps you write your job uh, descriptions, making the process even easier and quicker. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Uh, we got everybody here with us. Ja'Cory Harris is back. Uh, so, uh, Ja'Cory, um, you know, we, we always we talk a lot of recruiting on Locked on Canes. And, you know, I, I always I wonder about the unique opportunity that players in this community have if they do decide to stay in the 305 or stay here from the 954 or whatever to represent the Miami Hurricanes. You're somebody who embodied that. Miami Northwestern's superstar. Yeah, I hope there's not a fire there, Jacory. Is everything yeah. all, <laughs> is it, everything all, the, Do you need to go? <laughs> no, it was the re- the rescue and uh and police leaving the station. Oh man, well, I hope everything's all right there. But for you, Miami Northwestern legend, and you and so many of your teammates decided to stay at Miami. What did it mean to you to to stay here? Uh, it's crazy because I just got cut off because Tommy Streeter uh just called me and I, I forgot to have my uh my phone on Do Not Disturb. Uh, <laughs> and if you guys don't know, he's now uh, he's a he's a coach now. He's the receiver coach at uh, Alvin Maria University, so he's working awesome. his way. He he just decided to become a coach, so. Yeah. Um, it was it was it was it was cool, man. Being from home and uh, being able to stay around your friends and your family and um, play for a team that you love pretty much your whole life. Um, you know, I wouldn't put you know I wouldn't change that for the world, man. Um, we we did have some um, you know uh, high expectations coming into uh, you know into the program. Yep. But at the end of the day, you know we weren't able to accomplish some of the things that we wanted to accomplish. But uh, what I am proud of, we all stuck stuck through everything. <laughs> we went through, you know, mo- multiple coordinators, change of head coaches, um, injuries, uh, played through that. We, we, we were some resilient kids, man. And um, we, we all got our degrees. Uh, that's a big thing. Cause even the ones that left at juniors came back and got the degrees. And uh, those are things that we, you know, you, you can't um you can't ask for um anything better than that, man. Yeah, we all expected national champions. We yeah, we, we did too. <laughs> all right, here we go. But you know what? I in, in retrospect, I think they kind of handicapped Randy a lot with funds and money for coaches and things like that. Uh it's it's not anybody's fault. It just happened that way. But you guys yeah. are just really good people, you know, Marcus and and Spence and all you guys. That was really great to have you there. The crowds were into these games. It was really a lot of fun to watch you guys play. Though though, you know, and I never make excuses. Uh, but if I was ever a coach 
And um, the only thing I like, I all I've always said because I, I remember being in in the Elite Eleven um, with guys at the camp with guys like EJ Manuel, uh, Andrew Luck, um, who else was Blaine Gabbert, uh, Kirk Cousins was there. Uh, it's a bunch of guys that I had a, with Tyrod Taylor. It was a bunch of us that went back and we uh, we were in camp together. And then when you see all the teams that those guys went to. Um, those those coaches adjusted to their talent and to their abilities mm -hmm. and um you know not not I, I, I look i cherish everything about the university of miami but when when i was recruited i remember being told hey we're gonna change to a spread offense and to get there and then you know things not be that that was that was a you know it was a big difference it, and i'm not saying that that you know changed anything or affected anything but that's what we were used to and then it sucks sometimes to be on the field and look to the sideline and you see you got all these all-american receivers on the sideline red shirted on the bench and you got two guys on the field at a time and so you know that that's the one thing i know i like if i can um you know, take away anything from you know my time at University of Miami. If I ever was to decide to become a coach, I would recruit guys according to what we run, mm -hmm. and I, I would expect those kids to go places according to what you run, according to what you're used to, your skill set. Because at the end of the day, it's your life on the line. But you called your own plays in high school, yeah. and yeah, that's no. <laughs> and you're on the field, and you feel what's going on you see what's going on the guys come into the hall i could beat this guy and you yep. know what he's talking about then all of a sudden you get to the line of scrimmage and they're calling something else man leave me alone yeah and, now and we, we, we we've had a couple times conversation with you because i know what you did yeah you we, had, we had a couple times where we were out of the rhythm every time they you'd have to check down yeah we we had a couple times where we butt heads um and, <laughs> and like you know it it is you know, I guess college kids aren't supposed to butt heads with, with their offensive coordinators or anything. But, yes, coming from uh, how I was coached in high school by Christopher Perkins, um, he taught me – We it, it was to the point to where we really didn't even watch film uh, on defenses because, like, when, when we did watch film, it was just to learn little small tendencies of, like, how to – okay, let me look at the corner. Let me look at the safety to see how they play – um against certain cover when they run in certain coverages so we just looking at that we was looking at that we weren't looking at okay uh when they're in a three three they're doing this when they we weren't looking at that because our belief was you have to stop us we don't have to stop you we're the offense you adjust to us um my coach he taught me every defense there possibly could be in the world and we would place our plays up against everything so when I would come into when I was in high school and I'll be at the line and if I saw whatever I saw, I know, okay, against cover two, what I think might be cover two, I got this set of um, you know, I got this set of plays that I could run. This this uh log of plays that I can run against cover two, against cover three, cover four. If they rotate this way, I can have something on the backside that's gonna save me. If they blitz this extra guy that we can't protect my receivers know that I'm pointing either a two or one or a, or a fist to them to show them they're going to run a slant hitch or, or, um, or out based on the type of blitz that we're getting. Uh, we had, we had teams that went out there and just had a bunch of DBs and linebackers on the field and standing up and all over the place. And yeah, it confused me like the first play, but then I started seeing, okay, number 54 is the one that's dropping. Number 32 is the one that's coming. Uh, these last two plays, watch this turn around we throw a touchdown so mm -hmm. in high school that's how things were that's why we never lost a game um so when i got to college it was like i'm taking a step back and allowing you know yes i'm learning all over again but then i'm trying to get on the same page as the coach because i want him to understand that hey look i'm your eyes on the field i'm the one that's behind the center playing the game that sideline view thing being on the sideline you can't see what i see Right, and especially if you never play, if you never play quarterback, there's, it's kind of hard for me to listen to somebody that's never played the position. <laughs> so, um, 
so it, it's a lot of things that like I would come to meetings and voice my opinion. Uh, and it's and it's and it's after me researching and studying uh, and knowing our plays inside and out. Like, hey, look, if we add this adjustment, I know we don't have audibles. I know we don't have adjustments. But if we add this, if we do this, you allow me to say this, you allow me to change this. I feel like we can beat this, we can beat that, and it'll be it'll turn into a, a heated argument, and then in some way, somehow, I'm getting kicked out of a meeting. So, you know, wow. I, I just started shutting my mouth and just being quiet, and 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 I literally would be like, okay, you want me to run this play? I'm gonna run this play, and you know, sometimes the outcome was an interception, sometimes it was successful, yeah. mm. but. But I never, um, you know, I was just, I was just listening to my coaches after a while. Like I know my freshman year, I was out there having fun, because we go out there, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be losing to Duke 17-7, and they put me in. We went 49-24, and I was running Coach Nick's plays based on how I um, learned in high school. So like I wasn't making the same reads as that he taught me. I was just using the reads that I learned in high school. That's wow. incredible. I, I I love I love the insight and I love the perspective and I, I love I love the honesty. We've gotten a lot of good stuff here. Yeah, Don't yeah. be a stranger, Jacory. We're we're going to be hitting you up. I'm sure to come on again, my friend. And enjoy There's no problem. Enjoy the rest of your week. And thank you, by the way, for what you do out there saving lives. I can't tell you enough how I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate you guys having me on here. As uh, you know, I, I love talking football. I love talking sports. It, it, it gets me going. It gets some blood rolling in the yeah. morning. So. I, I told you this. Yeah. All right, so listen, maybe one of these days we'll meet over at Miami Prime Grill. Oops, they're Hey, let's go. Let's get Well, it. somewhere we got to find a new – if that if that place is closed, we'll yeah. find a different yeah. spot. We'll, we'll, go, it. We'll, go to, we'll go to Prime, actually Prime 112. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On you. Bruce is buying. Yeah, I'll yeah. Buy yeah. It, it could be on me. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'll hook you up, man. I'll hook you up. Thanks for coming on, Jacory. Appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, guys. Right. Thank okay. you guys both so much. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. We'll talk to you again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.